Hi, I'm Jalen Rose, and welcome to the Renaissance Man podcast, proudly presented by the New York Post, a show where we cover trends in fashion, entertainment, current events, and everything in between. My next guest has made a household name for himself playing Ashtray, the enforcer <laughs> of muscle, his big brother's bodyguard on the hit HBO series Euphoria, and my guy is just getting started. Javon Walton is unstoppable, and you will see him on the big screen this summer alongside Sylvester Stallone. It's my honor to welcome Javon Walton to the show. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, man, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. I appreciate the love. And as I mentioned, people know you from, for Euphoria, but you started out way before that. You was an elite youth boxer at the age of four. What made you want to start boxing? And were you ever afraid of getting hit? Well, let me let me answer that last part. I was never afraid of getting hit. That's not something, like, because when you're boxing, you, you can't be afraid of taking hits. It's part of the game at the end of the day. But um, what made me get into it is I saw it on TV from a very young age. I was about two years old. And I kept asking my dad if I could go to the gym. Like, I want to go to the gym. And I just kept saying that. And then when I was four, finally took me to a gym. That's kind of where it all started. I, fought, I fell in love with it ever since. So very mature, two years old, asking to go to the gym, four years <laughs> old, your father taking you to the gym. So who were some of your biggest boxing influences? My biggest boxing influences? Um, you know, I'm gonna have to say my dad to start off with, you know, he's influenced me a lot in the game and has really just like showed me, you know, the ropes and all that. And um, he's a uh, coach at a very high level. So, you know, he's, he's helped me with that. And then, um, yeah, pretty much just my dad. He's really so cool. being a fan of the sport, I've got a chance to see so many great athletes, in, in particular in boxing, the Mayweather's come to mind, being trained by their father. So what is that like for you being in the gym where it came back on. There it is. It went down. That's really weird. I don't know why he's doing that. Huh. It's interesting. That's no, I, I mean, like, no, I didn't do anything. That's correct. I don't know if it's like I'm talking for too long or, like, when it does. I don't know. I don't think it's me. No trip. No trip. Actually, hold on one second. I'm going to close every app really quick just to make sure it's not like the laptop that's like. Boom. It just went off. Whatever you just hit, it went off. Oh, his mic, he, he muted it too. He on mute. Don't mute. You're on mute. Yeah, I was just finish, um, finishing doing all that. All right. All right, here we go. Three. I'll go back to that. Three, two, one. So as you mentioned, interested in going to the gym at two. Your father took you to the gym at the age of four. So what type of influence has your father been on your fighting career so far? Well, what kind of influence he's made on me is, you know, just like being my coach, you know, he's really helped me out with that. And, you know, he's an amazing coach. He's um, really just helped me get to that next level. And he pushes me and I, I push myself, but, you know, he, he helps really push me. And um, that's the influence he made on me. So as somebody that's a huge boxing fan, one of the things I learned in training is I can hit the bag and I can kick the bag and I look good doing it, but I ain't getting hit back. You know what I mean? So for you, what is it like to have that rush of giving punches and receiving punches? You know, you have to find a healthy balance in between both of those, you know? So when you're, when you're really on your like head movement and all that, you gotta be throwing while you're doing that. And that's the most effective way to use, you know, movement. And, um, Boxing, you know, in boxing, it's really important to be, like, on your movement. That's really important so you can counter, you know, and 
knowing, knowing the direction of where your opponent's going, all that. So give me an example of a day in the life of training. You wake up early one morning. What does a day in training look like on the schedule? Day of training for me, well, um, I go to school now, so and I have to get up pretty early for that, which isn't too fun. <laughs> but um, after I get home from school, I usually do whatever the workout is. So if it's like a Monday, I have cardio, and then Tuesday I'll have boxing. And, you know, in between that, I'll also be lifting weights and stuff like that too. Oh, that's really serious. You really focus, and I appreciate that. And I've looked at your social media, and I appreciate the fact you're really close to your parents and as your si and your siblings. As a child actor and athlete, I know what's, how important it is to kind of have that support behind you. You know right. what I'm saying? When did you want to? When did you know that you wanted to pursue acting, and what was your family's reaction? You know, it's pretty crazy. It's not even, I was so young at the time, and it wasn't even something that really crossed my mind because I've been known in the boxing space for a little bit now. And I was about 11 years old when I went on the Steve Harvey show, and this casting director uh, named Jennifer Vendetti, she saw me on the show, and she was like, hey, like, do you want to try acting? I was like, yeah. Like, I mean, I guess, like, I'm down, right? And then it was a call for Euphoria. I ended up trying out for Euphoria, and I got it immediately. So hold on. So you literally fell into euphoria, your first exposure and opportunity to wanting to act. Yeah, that was my very that first experience. That is crazy. So, so what was the audition process like for you once you realized that that was something that uh, you were going to get the role of Ashtray? It really wasn't that, you know, crazy of a process. I tried out one time and no, but no other kid was like naming the drugs properly. And because they were looking for a bigger kid, you know, I was I was little at the time. So they were looking for somebody bigger, but nobody was like naming the drugs properly. And I was one of the few that could do it. And they loved my performance. So they're like, we need this guy. So and naming the drugs and knowing the lingo. Right. Is what made us fall in love with Ashtray. <laughs> and we really look forward to the show each week. But the beauty of your character is that it's a lot of facial expressions because in theory, you don't have a, a, that, a lot of ton of lines based on everybody else, right? Right. So, but the best thing, again, is about your relationship with your brother, Fez. You know what I mean? So talk about that relationship with that character. You know, Astra, he's a ride or die for Fez. They both need each other. You know, it's not like Astra needs Fez more than him. They both need each other. That's the only family they got. So they, they got a really strong bond. And they, they do anything for each other. So you're in high school. Mm -hmm. You're playing someone that's in high school. How does it feel like being around so many serious themes like drugs and violence and depression, in particular when you carry that based or going back to school and hanging out with your peers. Right, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting being in high school because I did online school for the longest, you know, so it's, it's weird being back in high school. Um, but it's definitely not as intense as Euphoria is, you know, Euphoria got a lot of crazy stuff going on. But And you stay on your fly too, rocking chain with the polos, cuts in your eyebrows, trying to wild sure. out. Probably a lot of that clothing I've ever seen on TV. A lot of you that know, clothing is my own stuff, you know. So like the shoes, the the track suits, all that stuff. I usually bring my own stuff to add my own little flavor to Ashtray. So who are some of your favorite designers? I see you rocking the OVO right now. The hoodie looking fresh. You know, I like um, I like OVO. It's a dope brand. I love Gucci right now, and Dolce Gabbana is dope. Love that brand too. Those are probably my top picks right now. So also, like, as a budding renaissance man, you're into your fashion, you're into boxing, you're into acting. So when did you realize, you know what, yeah, I could do all of this and still look fly? Well, I realized that pretty young. Even, like, my boxing outfits, you know, I would make sure, like, I had some custom trunks. I'd make sure they're fire. You know, I like, you, you got to add your own flavor so you stand out. I've always been on that. 1994 NBA draft. I wore a red and white pinstripe suit, and I try to keep. But that's the stuff that makes you stand out, you know. That's yes. the stuff that makes you special and have your own personality with it, you know, because clothes can express so much. Definitely, they can. And, and speaking of expression, I want to congratulate you. 
because this is going to be a big summer for you, young man. You got a few projects coming out, and one of them is Samaritan, starring Sylvester Stallone. That is crazy. What is it like to work with the legend Sly Stallone? Man, working with him was an absolute honor. So before I even got the gig, he flew us out to his house, and, um, you know, he was just, like, talking to us and just, like, seeing if I'm good for the part, seeing if uh, he wants me and my dad. And when I was at his house... Bro, it was insane. I mean, like, outside there was, like, a whole golf course. And, like, in his house, like, he had a whole room for uh, boxing memorabilia. You know, like, all that stuff of Rocky, Ram um, Rambo, all that stuff. It was super cool, you know. But when he um, when he ended up liking me for the part, um, it was super great working with him on set. He was a really good person, you know, super down to earth. How inspired were you when you got a chance to be around this icon? go into his house, see how he was living, and how did you reevaluate your goals after that? Man, I was, I was pretty inspired, you know, and being able to work with somebody that knows boxing as much as him. I mean, the guy was telling me about these, these boxers that would have, like, one eye that'd be fighting from, like, way back when, you know? It's, it's crazy. He has so much history on boxing. He knows so much. Who are some of your favorite fighters to watch? My favorite fighters to watch. Um, ooh, I love Canelo right now. I love Manny Pacquiao. You know, um, Miguel Cotto, amazing fighter. Love watching him too. And man, um, Tia Fimo, he's entertaining, super entertaining. And shout out to my guy Freddie Rose, who trained Manny Pacquiao for a long time. For I got sure. a chance to work out at Wild Card. Gym. Really? Yeah, that's absolutely. Dope. The legend. When, as a matter of fact, that's when he was about to fight Floyd. And I know that happened a few years after his prime, but in theory, just seeing Floyd fight and seeing him in the gym, I'm telling you, it was crazy. Like he's Man, I wish I wish they fought, you know, each other in the prime. I wish they fought. The fight was great, but you know, I wish it was in their prime. That would have been fire. I totally agree. Let me ask you something else about Samaritan. Who else is in the movie? Who else did you get a chance to meet? So, um Pilu from Game of Thrones, he's mm -hmm. great actor. He's phenomenal. I mean, we had some crazy scenes, and, you know, I really wanted him, like, for certain scenes to get aggressive for that, you know, and he really applied that, and it really helped me to show my acting ability. He was a phenomenal actor. I can't wait till this project comes out. But I, I can't have to wait. ask you this before I let you get out of here, and I appreciate you taking the time, and I'm a huge yes, fan of, of yours and a huge fan of the show. Are there any other career paths that interest you that you consider taking on? Other stuff that interests me. Um, you know, not really. I'm really happy with what I'm doing right now. I love boxing so much, and I love acting. They're both just, like, perfect for me. And it's crazy how acting even came about, you know? Like, it's clearly destined for me to do something in that space, you know, since I just I got it so randomly in my first gig, and now i just been growing ever since in that, in that world. That's incredible. Euphoria in its second season. As you hear this, be ending the second season. That so is congratulations on that. That is crazy. Ashtray is doing his thing. What's next in boxing? When can we see you in the square circle? How can we come support your you as a fighter? My next big thing will probably be nationals. You know, I, I'm trying to get that number one spot at nationals so I can make you know the uh, junior Olympic team and you know hopefully go to the next Olympics. That's that's the goal. So uh, Nationals is the next step. Well, we rooting for you. We Thank rooting you. for you for sure. And, and I appreciate you taking the time. But before I let you get out of here, I have a rapid fire segment called Gone in 60 Seconds. Cool. Right? This... Down. Yeah. All right, cool. Where do you see the character Ashtray in a few years? Ah, oh, man, I don't know. Still protecting his house. <laughs> no doubt about it. Name two boxers. You love to see fight in a dream matchup in their prime. Oh, shoot, man. Um, you know, Pacquiao and Mayweather, those, I, I got to say them. I got to say them. That would be an amazing prime fight. I think that's two what everybody goats. wants to do. Two goats, and that's a good For call. Sure. And as I mentioned, this summer you'll be also doing so many projects. I did a lot of homework. You're also joining the cast of Netflix's Umbrella Academy 3. If you could join the cast of another existing show, 
Which would it be? Another existing Peaky Blinders. Mm. I'd have to say Peaky Blinders. <laughs> Peaky Blinders. <laughs> and lastly, but certainly not least, what piece of advice would you give young adults who are interested in pursuing a career in acting? Man, just keep doing you, you know, just keep trying out for stuff and really just apply it, you know, do give it your all because eventually the right thing will come for you at the right timing. It always does. It always works out like that. Bana. I appreciate you joining the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you taking the time. Being here. The sky's the limit. Keep doing your thing. Thank you.